my problem with other YouTube videos on machine learning is that they start with problems and models that are way too complex to understand fully. They don't compare PyTorch code with NumPy code and they don't visualize the results. This is how I built a simple machine learning model in under 50 lines of code. First in NumPy and then in PyTorch. This model lays the foundation for artificial neural networks for classification tasks. So understanding and replicating it is easy but necessary if you want to succeed in the world of machine learning. Along the way to solving this problem, we'll explore some PyTorch code like BCE and Sigmoid. Stay tuned. Data surrounds us all the time. Even now, you are on YouTube on the channel Polizefalum. You could be described with various data points, but to simplify, I will reduce the data to three dimensions. You have the property of how much watch time you have spent on my channel, how many likes you have given, and whether you are a subscriber or not. There are other people besides you watching this video who can also be described in the same way. We will look at 10 different people. Five of them are subscribers and five are not. Each of them has their own watch time and number of thumbs up. From you, I only know the watch time and the number of thumbs up, but not whether you are a subscriber or not. That is what we want to predict using a model. First, we define our small data set. We store the data for watch time and thumbs up as a 10 times 2 matrix in the variable x. The data we want to predict, meaning whether someone is a subscriber or not, is stored in the variable y. We want to make a prediction with this data. For that, we need a suitable model. The data we want to predict is either a 0 or a 1 so either subscribed or not. It wouldn't make sense if our model predicted a 10 or minus 10 because our model should output a binary value. Therefore, we need to come up with a function that squashes input values into the range between 0 and 1. For this, we use a function that approaches 0 when the input becomes strongly negative and approaches 1 when the input becomes strongly positive. This function is called the sigmoid function. To show the model whether a prediction was good or bad, we need a loss function. The loss should be low if the model predicts that a non-subscriber is not subscribed. But it should be high if the model wrongly labels a person as a subscriber. Translated into numbers, if the model predicts a 0 or the 1 was desired, the loss should be high and vice versa. We then initialize the model parameters weight and bias. We have two weights because we have two descriptive variables, watch time and thumbs up. Each can have a different influence on the subscriber status. We define a learning rate and the number of epochs. Then we look at the training loop. Here we calculate predictions in the forward pass and adjust the weights in the backward pass. We repeat this for all epochs. The raw input data for the sigmoid function is called logits. We calculate these by taking the dot product of the x values with the weights, then adding the bias to each. The logits are passed into our sigmoid function, which transforms each of the 10 values to a range between 0 and 1. In the backward pass, the gradient of the parameters with respect to the loss function is calculated. The reason is that we need to tell the model in which direction to adjust the parameters to reduce the loss. We do this using derivatives. I'll show you these here, just pause the video. In the following, we subtract the gradients from the parameters. In this case, we only subtract 10% since our learning rate is 0.1. After each epoch is completed, we can make a prediction. We assume that you watched videos for half an hour and gave two likes. Based on the data, we want to know whether you are a subscriber or not. For this, we take the trained weights, apply them to the test data, and feed the resulting logits into our sigmoid function. When we run the code, we see that based on these two features, you are indeed a subscriber. Thank you for that. The future videos will not disappoint you. We can now visualize the model and plot it on the scatter plot. We see that the surface has adapted to the data. The blue area has minimized the distance to the red points and is reached when both the like count and watch time are high. The opposite applies to the red area, which has adapted to the blue points, meaning to the points of the non-subscribers. In PyTorch, the model is defined by creating a model class. This inherits the functionalities from the nn.module class. We initialize the model by defining a linear class with weight vectors of size 2 times 1. This layer also has a bias. 
In the forward pass of the model, we define the sigmoid function. We don't have to manually enter this as we did in the first part, but can conveniently call it using torch.sigmoid. After creating the model instance, we can create the binary cross entropy loss easily in the same way, which is also included in the torch library and does exactly what the manually typed loss function does. In the training loop, we make predictions by simply calling model of x. Then we feed the predictions into the binary cross entropy loss, calculate the gradients using loss.backward and subtracting the gradients using the learning rate multiplier. We can also make predictions here and see the same results. Thank you for watching.